Well, let's discuss this further now. I'm joined by the General Secretary of the Fire Brigades Union, Matt Rack, who supports Mr Corbyn, and by Catherine McKinnell, the very first member of the Shadow Cabinet to resign over Mr Corbyn's leadership. She is now supporting Owen Smith. Good evening to you both. Uh, we've had this remarkable figure uh, revealed this evening, uh, Matt Rack, uh, 183,000 applications made to the Labour Party in just 48 hours uh, to have the right to vote. People feel very strongly about this, but are you confident they feel strongly in the right direction for you that they're supporting Jeremy Corbyn or not? Well, that remains to be seen. There's going to be a debate and a discussion in the Labour Party now for the next two months and people will discuss the issues and I hope it's done in a friendly and comradely and polite manner and people need to discuss the policies. But I think uh, a lot of Labour Party members are angry about the decision of the National Executive to exclude some 130,000 plus members who had joined after January the 12th uh, and who have been excluded. So it may well be that and many, unless they were prepared to cough up the many of those people may now have, have rejoined to pay the additional 25 for that. I do want to take at one point, you, in, in your introduction, by the way, you introduced, you referred to Owen Smith as the uh, unity candidate. I think that's completely unfair. Uh, I, I don't accept that term. Uh, and uh, it, it, you, you know, impartial journalism, let's, I would argue Jeremy Corbyn is the unity candidate. Uh, Catherine McKinnell, what do you make? Is Owen Smith the unity candidate? Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, he very much is. And I think he gives a lot of hope to uh, not just members of the Parliamentary Labour Party, so Labour MPs in Parliament, but also a lot of members out in the country that he can actually unify the party, bring us together and make us into a credible opposition to the Tory government and ultimately a Labour government for this country. But what about those people we saw in John Craig's report, even in his own constituency, saying, I've never heard of him outside of Westminster. He doesn't have a profile, does he? How worrying is that? Well, I mean, I don't know where they found those people. Um, I, I heard uh, one of the, his predecessors, a former minister, saying in the valleys, if you even go a few blocks down, they don't recognise you. But I, I, I know that Owen has got a big personality, he's got a lot of ideas, he's got a lot of energy and I know for the next two months he and many of us who support him are going to be getting out and about up and down the country meeting, talking and listening to members um, and ultimately making sure that they make the right choice as to who can be the leader that can take us into government. And as for the current Labour Party leader, Jeremy Corbyn, I mean, he faced an absolute mauling at Prime Minister's questions today, didn't he, from the new Prime Minister, uh, Theresa May, comparing him to an unscrupulous boss. Well, I think, isn't it interesting, I think lots of people watching this whole uh, thing unfold over the past few weeks will have seen, you know, Nick Clegg has called, the Lib Dem leader has called on Jeremy Corbyn to resign, David Cameron has called on me to resign, that many of the parliamentary Labour Party have. Has yes, well. well it looks like to me the whole political establishment is saying that uh, Jeremy Corbyn should resign. I have to say that suggests to many ordinary people he must be doing something right because there's huge Cameron disillusion say, in politics it's in, in Britain. It's in my party's interest that he stays, but it's in the country's interest that he Well, goes. I think he was making a clear yeah. point that he, he should resign. That's the political establishment saying Jeremy Corbyn because they don't want that sort of politics. What Jeremy Corbyn has, has ignited a genuine interest among ordinary people in what sort of society they want. We don't want more cuts. We don't want our NHS privatised. We want workers' rights. Those sorts of issues, which now, interestingly, Owen Smith is now adopting and claiming that he's uh, as radical as Jeremy no, Corbyn. No, what, what, what Matt's describing are socialist values that all Labour MPs share and that we all want to see and that we all want to see put into practice in the country. And Jeremy does hold those beliefs. Nobody doubts that. But does he have the ability to actually translate them into practical policies that will actually deliver that change? Can he bring together the right people that can actually deliver that change in Parliament? And at the moment, the answer to that is emphatically no. And it's a very dangerous situation for our country. As we saw with the recent decision on the European Union referendum, where Labour did not have a strong enough voice in That's that debate, so. and a lot of people feel let down. We have to accept the result. Everyone has to accept the result, but everybody also accepts that Labour did not have a strong enough position in clear. that. Some and if we're going to have a functioning parliamentary democracy, we need a strong parliamentary party with a leader that leads the Labour MPs in Parliament. And at the moment, 80% are very clear Some that he cannot do that job. Some of the in this coup against Jeremy Corbyn had the biggest majorities against remaining in the EU. They couldn't win the arguments in their own constituencies and they blamed Jeremy Corbyn. It's absolutely but do you outrageous. Think Jeremy Corbyn fought hard enough. Jeremy Corbyn fought a, a, a very good campaign on the issue and he was more, it's his scepticism about the EU I think reflects the views of many working people in my own union. If we'd gone, as some Labour Remain campaigners said and said,
said, pretend there's nothing wrong with the EU, we would have been laughed off, off the court. So Jeremy Corbyn's scepticism actually tallies. Let's get back to this campaign, campaign, the leadership people. campaign, yeah. though. And a Corbyn spokesman has said Jeremy wants the campaign to be focused on policies and on how we get Labour elected so we can deliver for the people Labour speaks for. Does Jeremy, and do those around him, really care about getting elected? Because some have suggested that actually getting elected isn't the priority. It's about occupying Labour no, and staying there. I don't think that's what people are saying at all. That it's there are what people John that, Lansman It's not what John Lansman I know John, that's not what John Lansman has said. It's not what John Lansman has said. He's being misquoted. Right. The, 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 Jeremy Corbyn has led Labour to creating the biggest mass party in post-war history. That's a remarkable achievement. If Labour is going to win, unfortunately we can't rely as some in the, the parliamentary Labour think, on, on Rupert Murdoch to give us a friendly press. We have to be out in the communities and by building a mass party, that's what uh, La Jeremy has achieved. Agree with well, that. It, it, actually, agree building with the Labour you. Party is on an unprecedented scale mm. under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. That's a remarkable achievement, and instead of criticising for it, people, the parliamentary Labour Party should have been getting behind him. What's making no. Labour's, what's damaging Labour's electoral chances is what has ha happened no, in the uh, PLP. No, ultimately, I think. Um, I have based my decisions and the way I've acted, because obviously I was the first to resign from the Shadow Cabinet, because I could see that it was a very negative situation within the party, and I felt I needed to represent my constituents better, and I could do that from the back benches. I've listened to my constituents, and they are telling me overwhelmingly they have always voted Labour. They are very worried that they will not be able to vote Labour under the current leadership and that is ultimately what we need to change if we're going to get a Labour okay. government. All right, we're out of time. Catherine McKinnell and Matt Rack, thank you both very much indeed thank for talking you. to us. Thank you.